So now I have to make one big decision. Do I try and record the in introduction right in front of you and risk fluffing up and looking very unprofessional? Or shall I record it later? Hmm. I'm used to doing podcasts and things where you just, if you fluff it, just do it again. This is my entire life. <laughs> okay, so that's matter. you now saying to me that I have to do it in front of you and not mess it up. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> they do it in front and you can mess it up <laughs> okay but <laughs> that's, that, somehow that feels more pressuring now <laughs> no. hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series of the red cast it's 2024 and we're kicking off season four with a big interview directed all around the game that I spent the last three months hyperfixating about so you all should have really seen this coming but it's going to be a very Baldur's Gate 3 centric interview with one of my favorite characters from the game and I'm saying that to her face she's already heard me say it so hopefully it's not super embarrassing but we are talking to the voice and performance capture for Alfira Rebecca Hansen how are you doing hello hello I'm doing well thank you so much Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here, especially for you to be very tolerable as I uh, make three me mess ups trying to do the intro there. So thanks for, for sitting there patiently. <laughs> Anytime. I'm very excited to finally have a, a reasonable way to direct my obsession with this game to somebody who will understand. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Now, Alfira, yeah, Al, I think Alfira is such a brilliant character. I said this to you when I, I got in contact with you. I'm really excited to kind of delve into how it all came about. But before we get into the Baldur's Gate 3 stuff, because it's going to be the majority of this, I like to start by getting to know your origins into the acting industry and also maybe talk about some singing as well, because there's, there's, it's twofold with you, right? So I'll let you take the lead here. Where do you want to begin? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, oh, it sounds so cheesy when when actors are like, "It's the only thing I ever wanted to do," and <laughs> it's it's true though. Um, there was nothing else I ever wanted to do, and I was that obnoxious four year old who would like stand up on a stage and grab a microphone and be like, "Watch me perform." Um, obviously that that confidence has now gone, um, as it does when you kind of realise that you're a human and people judge you. Um, yep, but absolutely. <laughs> 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 Um, but no, it was all I ever wanted to do, but um, I'm from Glasgow uh, and um, London and, you know, just kind of the acting industry and everything felt like a million worlds away. Like I, it was untouchable and I was in a completely separate reality to that. So, you know, I would have, I would have loved to have kind of started it earlier, but um, I, I moved to London when I was uh 21 just after uni i did a joint honors in business management and english lit which um which i'm glad that i did but i i would have liked to have had the kind of drama school experience but i while i was doing that i kind of did every single short film indie production anything i could get my hands on to like build up some <laughs> kind of rudimentary showreel um move to london and then in that like very brazen way that you do in your early 20s when you think that the world is your entire oyster you just kind of come in and are like hey look at me i can do this when you have no experience like whatsoever you're like, it's like who are you and i just got really lucky that people were like yeah, okay, we'll give you a chance. I mean, it did not happen that easily. It was a lot of knocking on doors, lots of crying and being like, what am I doing? I have no money. But it went far better than I than I thought. I think just like kind of uh, perseverance. And then in 2019, I discovered voice acting and it just opened up a whole new world for me. Because before that I was doing kind of film and TV. I still am and I love it so much. But the jobs for film and TV are kind of far, like few and far between. You yeah. you have to kind of look quite a specific way, not in terms of like, no, you must be beautiful. And um, thankfully, we're kind of <laughs> moving more away from that. Um, but I think it is still you have to fit in with the rest of the cast. So if you know I'm part of a family, then they're like, oh well, we kind of needed you to be blonde with blue eyes, so you don't you don't get the part. Whereas Ugh, voice acting, <laughs> you don't. Yeah. With voice acting, you can kind of be uh, anyone and everyone. So I'm, um, I love it. 
I love it so much. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? All you have to do is, if you do a different accent, then you, you completely shock people when you meet them in person, especially considering the difference between Alfira's accent and yours. I mean, if no one had seen you before and then seen you speaking now, they go, is this the same person? Yeah, which is great fun. I, I do rarely get to be Scottish, which is a shame, but it does mean <laughs> that it's like, I feel as though I'm going to work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and be somebody else today rather than just doing this. Yeah, you can always separate it a little bit then. But was there anything particular yeah. in, in 2019 that drew you into voice acting? Was it like a particular audition or was it kind of like a an epiphany moment where you went, actually, I could try this? It was one of my friends, Sam Hallian, who I'd met on a job. He'd been saying to me for about a year, he was just like, you know, you should try voice acting. You you just put on accents and voices all the time and pretend to be these silly characters. You could utilize this. And I'm like, nah, that's not a job. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Um, so, uh, no, obviously I knew that it was a thing, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's scary putting yourself out there and trying something new and especially like, the amount of rejection that you face as an actor and the amount of rejection I've right. gone through over all of the years, kind of since I moved to London, um, I was just like, oh, I, I feel like I, I just, I, I'm, I'm safe just where I am. It's hard and it's a slog, but I know where I'm at. I'm, I'm scared to try something new. Um, and then eventually I just kind of woke up and was just like, what am I doing? Like, you may as well try. Life is short and this sounds like great fun. So I uh, booked to get like a voice reel done uh, with Crying Out Loud Productions who are linked to Damn Good Voices, who are still my voice agent after five years it's been, because they're incredible. And yeah, I, I, got, I got really lucky. Like I went in to do my reel and Simon, who runs the company, was in that day and kind of heard me do it and then kind of came up and was like, can you do like funny kids' voices as well? And I was just like, yeah. Um, he was like, great, okay, wait there and I'll come back and bring a, a book in. Um, glance over that if you could come up with seven different voices and we'll just record it in like 10 minutes um and uh, wow. so like, yeah sure no problem that's absolutely fine <laughs> um so we did that and um and then they signed me which was lovely so i got very lucky that was the bonus test they didn't brief you on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little do you know they have that kid's book ready for every person that comes in here, right? Let's give her the book yeah. and see how she does this time. <laughs> exactly. That's good how it managed to work out then. So that covers the acting side. So then also singing plays quite an element, right? So how did that come about in tandem? Was that just a hobby or was that something else you were looking at doing alongside this, the acting? No, I mean, I definitely would not say that I'm a professional singer. I love singing. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> I love singing. I sing all the time in the house. My poor neighbours. Right. Um, but I would never be audacious enough to call myself a professional singer. There are people out there who have trained for years and who are just very in control <laughs> of their voices and who are utterly amazing and I bow down to them. Um, I, I, I'm. It's very much a hobby for me, which does then seem to kind of creep into jobs though, uh, which is great fun uh, and also nerve wracking. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, you'll kind of start a job and singing won't have kind of been on the brief for it. And then all of a sudden they'll be like, you can sing, right? Cause we've got, we've got this thing coming up and you're like, sure. Um, yes, yeah, so that's happened three times, four times, four, three. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So there's there's a few instances <laughs> they just casually find out that you do a bit of singing and go, hey, so uh, I want to make use of it, and you're probably just there sweating, going, yeah, sure, <laughs> like with the kids' book. It's like, can we get a vocal coach then, so we do it properly? <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, that does lead quite nicely then into the main role that we want to talk about because Alfira is, uh, it's combined acting and singing because there is singing as an element in it. So let's start off with the very basic entry level question. How did that casting come about? How did the audition, was it just an audition you found or did someone reach out? How did that initial connection get set up? Yeah, so that was through, so my agents just sent me um, this brief Um it was different to kind of any other audition that I'd done before for voice because you had to put yourself on tape because obviously it was going to be kind of performance capture. So they have to see how you move. Um, right. And obviously I'd done loads of like self tapes for film and TV before that. But this was then 
even different to that because they were like you know we want to see from like the knees up and I'm in this like <laughs> tiny <laughs> loft bedroom like this and I'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> so you know you're trying to make it look as professional as possible but in the end it's just like your bed and desk and plants and you're just like this is my space this is all I've got to work with so here you go this will do yeah um, <laughs> yeah so this was probably like it came in maybe six months after I'd signed with my agents. And then it was, um, it, it was the first voice job that I booked. Wow. Which is bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a big way to start off. Right. Uh, but I mean, it worked. Like, so there is that. <laughs> it did, but how jammy, like so jammy, but I'm trying to think back. I, I don't think her character was named um, and I think it was all very much dummy sides. So, you know, I, I remember kind of acting out a scene kind of in like a battlefield. She's like stepping over bodies and it's all quite harrowing. Um, that's all mm. I remember from it. I can't I can't find the scripts anywhere for what they'd sent me. But oh, I don't think no. it, I don't think it had anything to do with Alfira. I think it was very much that they were kind of just casting in that range. So they were just seeing yeah, different looking people, to see and if then you could would kind of that like kind of yeah yeah. So when you got it, it didn't even say it was going to be a mix of like you said acting and singing. It was probably just going to be straight up an acting role, and then singing came into it later. I assume. Yeah. No, there was no mention of singing. Um, no. And you thought, oh, I'm safe. There's no <laughs> worry about that. <laughs> I'm trying to think when the Weeping Dawn came in, like when we recorded that. Because so, like, I was I was recording for Baldur's Gate for four years, and I think Weeping Dawn probably came in like two years in. And I'm trying to think if they sent me the song at home to listen to. I remember vividly, like, listening to it in the studio kind of on repeat with everybody maybe they didn't send it to me at home because it probably would have been like heavily NDA'd like do not share this yeah <laughs> um uh yes but I do remember them saying kind of like cool so we've got this song uh but um the demo track that they had sent is the track that you hear in the cutscene so I think that they decided that like they really liked the way that um so her name is Vasela Jocheva whose voice is just phenomenal. So that's the voice that you hear in the cutscene, but everything before that where Althea is just kind of like practicing and singing to herself and stuff, that's all, that's all me. I was going to ask, because I did think it was interesting to say how the main, like the studio song was a different voice to yours and how that came about. So did they originally plan for you to record the full Weeping Dawn yourself afterwards as well? And they just kind of decided to stick with the demo. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't know. Um... Like, we recorded the whole thing in the studio, but I think we recorded it very much kind of like, you know, she's there, I'm like, you know, performance capturing, playing the lute, rather than like going into like a, like a professional music recording studio to do it. We didn't do that. So right. um, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure how it came about if they decided like, oh, will we get her to do that? Or actually, will we just leave it? I really like the demo track. Let's just use that. I don't actually know. They were conversations that happened without me there I, I try not to take it personally no I'm kidding <laughs> oh, I was gonna say <laughs> yeah I, I, so I mean... stunning that I'm like use that please <laughs> <laughs> okay so over four years to be fair that's that's a long time was all of it done as performance capture or were there any that were just voice lines no it was all performing ca performance capture yep yep so you're in the suit wow every every time so what was that experience like then for someone who'd, who'd done the acting and then said oh I'll give voice acting you go and then suddenly you're in this weird mesh of the two what was it like trying to adapt to that and then Oh, well, do it over the course of four years. Yeah, I mean, the first session I was definitely super nervous going in because I was like, don't mess this up. Um, they, <laughs> they've really trusted you to do this. But thankfully, so we recorded it at Pit Stop Productions in Croydon and they are just the loveliest people and they're so patient and they're used to working with voice actors who haven't done this before. And so they, you know, they, they put you in the suit and then they tell you exactly what it is that they want from you in terms of, you know, where your feet should be, uh, coming, like, what poses they need you to do to, like, set it all up. Um, and then, you know, like, performance capture stuff with, like, The Last of Us, where they're in this, like, massive arena and they're running around and they're, like, performing the scenes. We didn't do that. It's very, it's, like, stationary. So that is, 
easier. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the, the tricky thing with it is that you have to come back to what's called your base pose at the end. So you're, you know, you, you, you start with your feet in a certain position um, and then you're talking and you're doing your thing and then you have to end up right back in that position again so that they can animate it all kind of seamlessly and that's quite tricky to make it look really natural <laughs> like yeah i'm talking to you and then i'm just gonna you know come back to exactly the way that i started this scene <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> i might start trying to do that now and ask you questions i'll move around and then just return to this the same position to listen yeah. <laughs> It's funny you said the last of us because when you when you were saying about the performance capture studio in my head, the thing I was visualizing was what I'd seen the last of us doing it behind the scenes. So as soon as you said that, I was like, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one who's using that as the benchmark. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of it being performance capture, I'm not really surprised because everything, it seemed like everything or nearly everything was done as performance capture. I think there's only the odd bit of footage I've seen that's been actual voice recordings. I know I think J.K. Simmons did some stuff in the voice booth for Kethrick mm. that wasn't performance, but like most of what I've seen has been performance capture, which is amazing because I don't think there's many games that do that amount of it, but it does work. Yeah. It, like it, it, it makes it feel a lot more realistic and it, it was pulled off really well in the game, I think. And I hadn't really thought much about the base thing until you'd said it. So now I'm going to look and go, oh, I can see. Um. Yeah, you can see. And it's, I think it's cool <laughs> to, to understand how that's done um, behind the scenes. I think that's, I always think that's really fascinating. Maybe I'm just a bit of a nerd, but I enjoy hearing that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I found it fascinating when I started. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Interesting. Cool, cool. Yeah. So we talked about it a little bit before we properly started recording, but just to recap. So how much experience have you had with Dungeons and Dragons as a brand before getting the part? I, I didn't have any experience with Dungeons and Dragons before getting the part. But um, about a year ago, I was like, OK, BG3 is about to come out. I should really know like more <laughs> about this world. Obviously, I'd read up on like tieflings and the lore and all of that stuff before doing yeah. the part but i hadn't i hadn't gone and actually like played in person so i was like okay i'm gonna attempt to find a group and i got so lucky it was meant to be i like bumped into an old friend who i hadn't seen since glasgow so i hadn't seen her in like nine years um wow. called naomi miller who's also a voice actor and um and i just mentioned to her like yeah i'm looking for a D, &D group and she was just like I got you. Like, I've been part of one for the last few years. <laughs> We're literally just about to finish our campaign in the next two weeks. Um, can't, like, come join our group. And obviously I had to be interviewed um, because <laughs> it has to be correct. Like, you're, you're, you need somebody at the table who, like, works with everybody else and isn't going to kind of mess up at all of the campaign. It's, it's, a, it's an, a perfect balance has to be struck. Um and this group are just so wonderful. So I've been playing with them for a year um, and I'm just having the best time. I, I, I now love it. So now I also do a Twitch campaign on Fraser's Forge, which is run by Fraser Blacksland, who plays Damon in BG3. Um, right, and so okay. we do this Twitch campaign called Shadow of an Empire with um, Jack Collard, who's our DM, who is currently pulling his hair out. We've got a full day of recording tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and we've, we've, we've really like gone off track. He's like, I, 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 am I meant to plan for this? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I don't envy the DM's role. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. But no, so I've gone from uh, not, not having played it to being part of two, two groups. Uh, and I love it. Yeah. There you go. That's that's quite the change. I am personally really interested in getting into it, but yeah, it's it's finding a group, right? It's finding a group, and then also being able to coordinate on the times, that kind of thing. Like to me, it always seemed like that very daunting thing of, oh wow, so it's like a whole thing you're invested in for ages, and there's a lot to get to learn. I'm like, oh, maybe at some point I'll do that, and then I have it shoved in my face. This game, like actually, this actually seems quite fun. Maybe uh, maybe we should have a look. But um, yeah. I will ask you as well for the link to that, and I'll put it, by the way, for everyone watching, I'll have it in the description so you can check out the live streams if you want to watch them. Talking about Althea then as, as a, a specific character, once you knew a lot about her, like what was what was getting to know her like? What was your favourite aspect of her character, like getting to know her and getting used to playing her? What was it about her that stood out to you? I mean, I think going into it, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so sweet, and she's just had such a hard time. And, and so it was really, it, it was quite nice to play her um you know because you, you can go in and play really like evil characters which is which is good fun in and of itself but sometimes it takes I don't know I, I really I, I enjoyed the days going in and recording her because I just I felt such an affinity with her and then I think as the sessions went on I was like 
Gosh, she's got some. She's she's got a lot of inner strength as well, though. Like she has been through so much, and she can be a total badass when you push her. And so that was really fun to explore as well. And obviously, getting to do it over the course of four years, I think, um, you know, and because it's not like I was in every day. You know, she's she she only appears kind of like here, there, and everywhere. But so there was you know months between sessions sometimes. Um, but by the end, like I could go right back in and 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 just immediately I'd be like, yeah, cool. No, we're we're Alfira again. Like I know her so well, um, which is, but, and, and I miss her because then we're not recording it anymore, and it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanted me to ask you to do voice lines, I could have put it in there. I don't normally ask no, people because I don't like no, to be like dance no, monkey. No. But if you want me to, <laughs> <laughs> no, please no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll just delete those three questions. No, seriously, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, in all that time then, obviously you said this, all of it was done in mocap. You did it across four years. And, and as you said, there's only some certain scenes that come out. Did anything stand out to you as a really, like, a favourite moment for the character or a favourite scene to film? Or even having seen it afterwards come out and gone, oh, that came out the best out of everything. Is there anything that really grabs you as, that's my fave? Interesting. I think... Um, I think Althea being kind of drunk in Act 2 when you meet her in the tavern was super fun. I was about to say Althea being drunk was probably my favourite part as well. (laughs) Because it was so unlike her and you just kind of see her with her guard down a little bit um, in like a much nicer space and and yeah, so that was... That was super fun to do and super fun to find the balance as well of like, she's not like totally inebriated on the floor. She's just, she's like happily tipsy. She's having a good time. I was like, yes, Alvira. Yes, you are. It was so good. (laughs) I don't think I saw the interaction the first time around and I'd seen Alvira in like most of the spots. And then the second time around, it came across that conversation with her and she's like, I'm going to write a song about you. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is such. A, <laughs> it was just the most. It was such a well, well written and well performed. I was like that is the perfect thing for Alfie. Like as he said, it's seeing her with her guard down. I thought that was so good. I really love it. And I feel like most people like have gotten so used to her character um, and and loved her. But I think it's a, a fun fun time to include a fan question. And for everyone watching, as usually what I would do is have a section at the end to include all the fan questions. But this time I'm trying things differently for this season where I'm going to jut them in through conversation. But while most people did like uh, Alfea and respond to her in game, uh, Ellie wants to know, how does Rebecca feel about the squirrels surrounding her calling her sing- singing horrendous in Act 1? <laughs> Everyone's a critic. Um, Aren't they just? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I love it. Um, uh, and also one of my friends, Aliona, like voices one of the squirrels. So I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you can be mean. It's okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's, it was such a funny thing as well because that it's, it's again it's one of the great things about the game is that you find these things after revisiting and revisiting and playing things differently same as seeing the drunk scene but the idea that you can talk to pretty much every single animal wasn't really something that I properly registered with me until the second run and so I was doing it every possible moment like let's talk to you let's talk to you and the way they respond and then decide that tap dancing is the right way to say we can do something better but no everyone yeah. everyone is a critic everyone is a critic <laughs> Okay, so next thing then, with the amount of filming that you did, was there any point, any chance for you to do improvised material then? Was it all scripted or did you kind of make anything up on the fly? No, it was all scripted. The The writers for this are so incredible. Um, I mean, I think there were maybe times where you could like slightly tweak something, but it would be very much you would ask like can we change that word to this word it just flows better and often they'd be like yeah yeah yeah, that's fine but no there wasn't there wasn't like cool can we just like see what happens in this scene like (laughs) so you could walk in and go all right i really like the drunk scene can we do four more of those please and they go ah (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) because that's another question uh from a fan Uh, blair wants to know how much creative freedom you have with alfira so slightly different to the improvisation but were you able to influence any discussions about a character the more you got used to her, or was that also very rigid with the script? I think it was more as we went along. Um, so obviously we, we had voice directors and movement directors for every session. Right. Um, and I think, you know, after four years, if you were then working with a new director that day, because um, they switched around all the time, um, 
then they'd almost be asking you sometimes, like, do you feel Ophira would do this? Because obviously I've been with her for like four years, whereas right. they're coming in to this session. So that would be really lovely because it would be more of like a discussion where I'd be like, okay, yeah, well, well let's try it like that way where she's a bit more harsh and then let's try it another way where she's, you know, whatever. Um, so that that was that was really nice kind of getting to feel as though... Um, I had some kind of, you know, a knowledge of her that could be drawn upon was was really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Like you kind of become like a custodian for her as a character and you had had that knowledge base to refer to when people asked you. That's that's good. That's really nice. So you still have that experience to offer, even if how it's done, like the writing of it is very rigid, you kind of can still influence a bit. That's nice. Mm-hmm. A little bit of that flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the writing is incredible. Like it's just... Uh, it's just so pitch perfect so yeah there there was there wasn't many t- it, it's one of those ones where you just read it and you're like yeah i know exactly how to do that there's no like oh gosh you could do like how, how would she do this it's like no yeah she would just say that of course she would then let's give you a chance to change the narrative a tiny bit because i do have another fan question there's quite a few in this section that all blend together very well so here, here's a chance for you to change things slightly because eddie wants to know that if alfira wasn't a bard what other D and D class, and you might have a better answer to this now with your year plus experience. But what class do you think Alfira would fit into if she wasn't a bard? What would you pick for her next? This is going to be the hardest question I ask you all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I would say druid. Um, but maybe that's really boring because you'd like find her in the druid's grove. Maybe I should go like totally off piste um, and be like, she's a secret cleric. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> have a safe answer and have a wild answer, then you cover yeah. both bases. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Safe answer, druid. Wild answer, cleric. Purely because I would love to play cleric Alfira. I think that would be so cool. Um, so yeah, next next time. That would be interesting. And you could still you could still combine the classes together, right? You could have her be a cleric bard, and then it really is wild. She's still doing the weeping dawn, but in the middle of a church or something. <laughs> With spells. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've talked a lot about getting to know Alfira and recording for her. So let's fast forward now to when the games come out. So everyone's raving over the game. One of the biggest things that people had said was that people really wished for Alfira to be a main companion. You know, she has this side role. She pops up several times, as you said. But the amount of people, now myself included, who thought... If there was one character who could have got more time, it should have been Alfira. What's it been like from your perspective to see that amount of love come to a character that you've built up over the last few years? It's been so wonderful and unexpected. Because so obviously I, you know, was just going in and recording my my little bits over the four years. And it's quite difficult as well to um to kind of have a handle on exactly what is happening. Because obviously there was like script changes and rewrites and you were kind of jumping narratively and um, and obviously there's so many different dialogue trees depending on like how the player has interacted with you and what's happened before and all of that stuff. So it's, it's quite tricky keeping all of that in your head. So I wasn't really sure even how much of a part she was. Like, you know, it could get to the release and it's like actually we kind of decided to cut her she only appears once and says hello and then leaves oh god imagine (laughs) you just don't know so having having the reaction that it's had and having people kind of message and saying that Ophira was you know maybe one of their favorite characters or just like really influenced their enjoyment of the game or or whatever and that it would have been fun to have her as a companion was so lovely and also I think because I'd gotten so attached to her um, it's been really nice having her be shared with the world and other people also really loving her um, has has warmed my heart. Yeah, it's been really nice. Yeah, it's 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 such a cool thing to see that there's such a, a big response for it because I kind of thought in my head, I thought, there's no bard companion. Why isn't Alfira looked it up online? Everyone else is saying the same thing. I'm like, okay, good. So I'm not going crazy. Everyone's kind of in the same, the same thing here, the same situation, the same feeling. <laughs> because... We do get a point, and I, I will warn for spoilers, if you haven't already played Baldur's Gate 3, what are you doing? Go and play it. But I will <laughs> warn at this point in particular for spoilers, specifically for the Dark Urge storyline. You know where this is going now if you didn't already, Rebecca. But there is a moment where we almost get to have Alfira as a companion, and it doesn't quite work out. So can you tell, t- walk me through a little bit what it was like to, to film that? Did you get the impression you were going to get more and then it was took away, or did people t- did they tell you from the start, this is what's going to happen? How did that section of the filming come about? I mean, it's so short, so I'm not going to lie. I don't actually really remember doing it. And also, like, uh, so, okay, so spoiler alert. 
the dies. Yeah. Um, and but you, it, it, there's no murder scene, so it's not like I had to act that out. It's literally her being like, "Yeah, please let me join you. I will do anything. I will, you know, whatever." Um, which, yeah, I, I mean, so I, I didn't have to do like a big a big dying thing other that would have been memorable should have done one for the fun of it behind the scenes okay we're gonna film this we probably won't use it but it might be handy for for a flashback or something yeah damn it to be fair i think it would have broken everybody to hear alfira screaming to her death i don't think that would have made anyone very happy now that i think about it it might have been a crisis averted to be fair but i think like i was saying with the with the with the branches there's so many different things that you can do and choose exactly right so I think when I was recording it, I just, you, you know, they, they kind of roughly explain like, so this is a choice that can happen and here's your reaction. And you're like, okay. And then you record it. I, I don't think I realized that it was a whole like separate kind of narrative story like right. at all. I had no idea about it. So when it, when it finally came out and people were like, oh my God, I just played as the Dark Urge. I'm like, good for you why is the who what sorry what do you mean (laughs) and it probably doesn't help as well i'm assuming it was all super disjointed the order you filmed everything right so like there's no real flow of where things are going so you're just like oh i'm i'm so i'm gonna get okay right i'm just doing this scene and it's so it doesn't mean much to you right either no um i mean obviously like you you put yourself in whatever moment you're in with the script yeah but yes narratively you are jumping all over the shop and and being really nice to the player and then hating them and then do, you know so it's it's really difficult to piece it all together in your head so no i think when i was recording the dark urge stuff i had no idea um that that was about to happen yeah it's <laughs> and it's, it's so funny now because like you said it, things are so disjointed and that covers the question from uh, demorbs who asked about that about how it was recorded um so the order was completely disjointed but yeah seeing it must be so wild having a particular scene that you don't even really, maybe even forgot about completely and suddenly go, oh, I filmed that that one afternoon. That was, wow, that ends up being much more important than I realised. Yeah. Yeah, because that would have taken 10 minutes. You know, like it's, she doesn't yeah, have Yeah, wouldn't much have taken of, long to... T- <laughs> no. Yeah. You don't talk to her for very long. <laughs> no, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> so okay let's follow on from that then when did you actually see that scene in full first was it after the game had come out or did at any point you get to see anything behind the scenes to be like here's a scene we've put together for you and then they show you that um no i youtubed it i after many messages from people talking about the dark version i was like what is this thing um and then did a google and was like rude yeah you were horrified <laughs> But then it's been funny because obviously I've had friends who are wanting to play it and now whenever I, I, you know, they're like, oh, I just bought the game. I'm like, cool, no spoilers. But if you want to interact with me more, maybe don't play as the Dark Urge for your first playthrough. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right, is that people have had to figure out ways to work around not having Alfira end up in that scene. Have you, have you seen people coming up with workarounds to save her? Yes, yes. People have told me about that. I'm like... So clever. I did that exact thing last week. I was like, I'm not, I'm not getting Alfira killed. So I'm like looking up on YouTube. And they go, right. So what you do is, on like, set, figure out what night it is that the scene's gonna trigger, and make sure you save before it, and then go back and knock her. Out. I'm like, there's no way this works. And then I, I do it, and then someone else turns up instead of Alfira. I'm like, great, she saved, brilliant. <laughs> so like, you're being nasty to everybody else. I was like, no, keep the bard alive. She doesn't deserve <laughs> this. Okay, she's she's separate to the equation. We keep her out. She's not gonna die. We leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you but it's such because it's such a dark scene anyway as well because you don't i mean yeah for lack, for lack of a better term really with the pun but you don't expect it especially if you don't know much about the story going in which it's the best way to play it so again i did warn the spoilers if you're already at this point sorry but it's such an unexpected thing you get little hints of the violence but oh wow there's an, a new companion this is going to be really cool why is this in the main game oh and you realize you think oh dear oh dear oh dear so Rough. Very, very rough. turn very quickly. Yeah. Couple of other questions about it as we come towards the end of this particular section. Um, for one thing, just purely out of interest for myself, have you been back and done, and this is not to get you to expose anything, this is purely for things they've added since the game's come out, have they had you come back at any point to re-record or do any lines since the game's come out, or has it been a very definitive, you're done and you've not come back? Yeah, no, no, I've not been back in. 
Oh, God. No. So it really was a complete clean cut then. It was. I mean, I had like three last days because um, I you okay. know, went in and they were like, you're finished. You know, this was before the game had come out and uh, and it was, you know, mm-hmm. saying your goodbyes and everything. And then like two days later, they'd be like, no, actually, we have some more lines. Just, can you come back in? And then I was like, is this my last day now? They're like, yeah, sorry, lol. And then it's like a week later and they're like, actually, just, just one more time. You just... <laughs> um, <laughs> So I think that was just like frantically kind of getting the last little bits done, um, uh, which was which was lovely. Um, and I've been back to pit stop for other games as well. So because otherwise I would miss them all far too much. But no, I have not been back in since the game since the game came out for Alfira. No, nope, nope. Was it any more challenging to do those extra last days then? Like, had you kind of like in your head built up that's it, I'm done, and starts to seal it off? And was it harder to come back into Alfira's role, or was it still just like riding a bike? No, I think I find it difficult to say goodbye to stuff. So I don't ever have like it in my head of like that thing is over now. I always just think like Right. That'll continue at some point. Blissful <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> and I suppose it doesn't help that people are still talking about the game for so long afterwards as well. So you're like, yeah, that's still very much an ongoing thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine for me. Great. Let's just keep it going for as long as possible. <laughs> then I don't need to be sad. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that does bring me to the last big question for Alfira because Larian did say when the game had come out, they wanted to do more stuff for the game. They wanted to do some kind of expansion. It was more a matter of writing something up than can we do it? It's like, will we do it? Can we come up with something? So this probably is the easiest question to ask you in the world, the easiest one to answer. But if they knock on your door again, they say, hey, we're doing a bit more for this game. Would you come back? Yeah, in a heartbeat. In an absolute heartbeat. It's one of those questions where I'm like, is it even worth asking? Because I know the answer, but you still say it, right? How funny would it be if after all this, I was just like, actually, no, I'm really done with her. I've moved on with my life. I know, because if you had, I'd have gone, oh, wow, okay. (laughs) You would have surprised me. You would have kept me on my toes. But no, I I fully expected that. But who knows what they can do with it, right? There's there's a lot of opportunity. People are always theorizing about these things. And they have listened a lot to what the, the fans have wanted and added things in that people have requested. So, Alfira is popular, so you never know, right? Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, that'd be wonderful. Fingers crossed. It would be good. It really would be good. Oh, well, who knows? Maybe in like a year or two's time, then we'll look back on this and go, oh, there you go. So something did happen. That's the hope, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the hope. So at risk of not breaking any NDAs or, or risking your revealing of details, we'll leave that there. One thing I like to do, especially when we've got an interview where it's so centric around one character, obviously, I don't need to tell you, an actor has a whole range of roles that they play. And I feel like sometimes so much attention gets given to one that you kind of sit there and think, can we talk about this instead? So what I like to do is give everyone a chance to say, here are some other roles I've done, whether it's ones that you just don't feel like get enough love or the ones you're very passionate of or ones that you think fans of this particular character might very easily transition to. So what else have you got up to alongside Alfira that you think people might enjoy? Well, so this is the tricky thing with the like voice stuff is that, you know, you're recording for so many years, but these things take ages right. to animate. Um, so I've, I've, I've been really, I've been really busy, but not that much stuff is out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've done lots of work, but I can't tell you any of it yet. Yeah, you know, I'm boring. Um, so, uh, no, the, the, the two things that I'm, I am very proud of, uh, are that, are out for kind of voice related stuff. I play Neve Black Talon in a Warhammer series called Black Talon, which is super cool. And I get to be like, you know, a kind of commanding officer who's in charge of this whole kind of elite group of fighters, which is which is awesome to get to play such a badass. Um, because normally I play sweeter characters, which is also wonderful. Um, but it's it's fun to do people that are like commanding armies, which is things that I would never get to do in film and TV either, because they'd take one look at me and be like, um, no. Um, <laughs> and then another. <laughs> Can you not do it like the good, like, the stern stare, like the real like evil glare or something? Is that it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, just, just don't, don't look quite right. You just start cracking up. You start looking and you're like, no, I can't keep this up. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I know. And then another thing that's out at the minute that came out mm, a month or two ago is uh, a kids animation series called Shasha and Milo, where I play Shasha. It's on Pop TV. So if anybody has children, it's wonderful. It's super cute. I play like a 12-year-old human-cat hybrid who saves the island and it's really, really fun. And then I've got two games that are coming out next month in April, um, which 
one of them I'm the lead in, which is which was really really cool to do. Oh, uh, and and the other one is a really fun character that you can kind of uh, have as part of your gang if you if you pick her. Um, and again, I can't say what they are, but um, maybe once this is out, uh, then then you know in a month's time you can be like it was these things that she was talking about, uh, and I will inevitably chat about them on my socials when they do when they are released even though we're not quite done if you do want to share your socials that seems like a good point to slip them in since you've mentioned it <laughs> plug no uh yeah do it go for it no that's what i mean you're here to chat to me i have a chance to promote your stuff go for it <laughs> um uh so i if you want to find me on twitter dash x um i am rebecca hansen and then on instagram i'm rebecca dot hansen because somebody got in there first well that's not good <laughs> <laughs> You should have had Rebecca Hansen official or something, really gone in for like the acting thing, you know? <sighs> no, no. No, no, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Both of those, again, in the description. But uh, I do have another question based on the voice roles, uh, because you did say at the start of the interview that uh, singing popping up in the middle of voice acting was something that happened, was it three or four times? Mm-hmm. Did that happen in either of those two roles you just mentioned? Did singing come up afterwards? It did in Shasha and Milo. Uh, it did not in Warhammer, funnily enough. Warhammer did not want me to sing. They were like, I did think that, no. yeah. I thought if, if you're meant to be this big stern commander, the idea of you pulling out a loop might be a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> no, there's definitely two or three episodes in Shasha and Milo where they, they throw in some musical numbers. And then I've got another kids animation that I'm working on at the minute um, where, again, they had like a kind of musical episode, which ended up being super fun. But at the time I was like, oh my God, this is terrifying. Um <laughs> Yeah, and then and then a, another kind of live action. Uh, so I I started out in kind of kids TV doing like a CBBC show called Dixie, which is um, very oh, wow. wholesome. Uh, and and there's there's a there's a good bit of singing in that. There's some there's some wonderfully um, I wouldn't say embarrassing. Never be embarrassed about the things that you have. You know, it was work. Um, but there are some there are some great. Uh, children-centric music videos on YouTube from uh, from my Dixie days. Good times, yeah. So what we'd say is it's not the thing you'd casually put on YouTube in front of your friends? No, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like I vaguely recognise the name Dixie. I think it might have been a bit uh, after me being like super young, but I have heard of it. So hearing you name drop that, I was like, oh, okay. Because I'd heard of that. Because there's another thing you've been in as well that I'd heard of, which was The Witcher. Because you got to yes. be in that too, right? If we're talking about TV. Yep. Um, yeah, The Witcher was 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 great fun. Uh, yes, I got to play Queen Maeve. Um, and I got to be Scottish, which was fab. Well, hey! <laughs> yeah! So she she pops up at the end of season two. Uh, yeah, that was great. That was that was a lot of fun. I'm also currently in, a, in an Irish TV show called Blackshore that's streaming on RTE at the minute. Um, and I'll we'll, we'll see if it comes to kind of iPlayer or anywhere else because I've not seen it yet because I don't live in Ireland. But it was oh god, <laughs> it was great to do. <laughs> I'm in all the episodes. If any VPN wants to sponsor this podcast, I'll yeah. promote it right now and then be like, you can watch Blackshaw. So if anyone wants just to reach, just, yeah, please, thanks. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay, so quite a few things that you've uh, done. So kind of ties into my last question which i'm imagining i already know the answer to now you've talked about the games but what's next for you is there anything else coming out down the line that you can talk about or is everything super hush hush everything is super hush hush i'm so sorry there's like five or six things that i'm working on at the minute and i i can't talk about any of them which sounds super hoity-toity it's like oh it's just really secret but it is i would i would get major slaps if i did so i'm not going yeah, to yeah what, what a show off oh i'm doing so much work i can't tell you i'm doing so no no i get it i do it's it's ndas can be a pain i fully appreciate that don't worry <laughs> oh well i'm keen to see what the especially the lead the lead sounds really good for the the game next month so i'm excited to see what that ends up being um so do do let us know and i'll share maybe i'll share the interview around when it gets announced be like hey i i chatted to rebecca i i did it before before well not before it was cool because alfira was pretty established <laughs> but i'll say that and then sound like i got in before a trend and then it'll make me yeah. seem smarter so then it bigs me up a little <laughs> full permission love it thank you very much <laughs> Well, um, that just about wraps up every question that I had to ask you. That covers everything. That It's been so brilliant to get to talk to you, Rebecca. Honestly, it's been such a pleasure. 
This has been lovely. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, no, I, I really appreciate it. As I said earlier, it, it's honestly just nice to have someone where I can just talk about the game to and not sound like a crazy person. <laughs> because to the outside perspective, to like to my mom or my friends, it's just like this game that you haven't stopped talking about for three months and the people I told you have never played it. So they understand that I'm into it, but don't really get the details. So it's it's nice to just have that conversation with someone who Top goes, dancing I get this. And you're like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bit we take out of context now. How do we sum this into you? <laughs> Tap dancing squirrels. That's it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca. Genuinely, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate it. Um, and as I've said to everyone, if you want to check out more of what Rebecca's up to, the link to the Twitch where she plays D&D will be in the description, as well as her Instagram and her Twitter. So you can check her out and follow her on everything and keep in touch for all the, the big announcements whenever they happen. Because I'm quite keen to see. I mean, to be fair, if there's two games coming out next month, it can't be long until they get announced, right? We'll see. I don't get told these things. Normally, I just I see them just kind of like appear <laughs> online. I'm like, I guess we can talk about it now. <laughs> like the Dark Edge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you play the characters, and then you're the last one to find, oh, it's been announced. Oh, okay, cool. So I can I can say, okay, cool. I'll say this now. All right. There Actors you go. are the last to know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It would, to be fair, it'd be really funny. I'm planning on putting this out this Saturday. For the, for the people listening, we're recording this on Wednesday evening. I'm hoping to put this out on Saturday. If I swear down, if something does come out before then, it's going to be so funny. And I will put it in on the video version if it does. But I'm assuming, hopefully, like I don't want the interview to, to age badly within three days of us recording it. That would not <laughs> yes. be good. But anyway, yes, seriously, Rebecca, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.